As a kid in Florida, I used to read books about the Mississippi River, and uh, I had family in southern Illinois, West Frankfort, Illinois. We'd ride across the country, stay in West Frankfort, Illinois. I had an uncle in St. Louis, Missouri. I crossed the Mississippi River many times. Uh, we made a move from California to Florida. I'd always look over that bridge and think, man, that's a big river. Always had dreams about fishing the Mississippi River. Not knowing that river, biggest river that I have fished has been the Tennessee River. I really wasn't sure what to expect. And the biggest mistake I made was going up to the Mississippi River in the springtime. I rolled up to Northern Kentucky and got a motel and I had about an hour left before dark. I said, I'm gonna take a ride out, look at the ramp. Might even put the boat in for a little while, do some night fishing. Had bait in the cooler, I was ready to go. I pulled down to the ramp and it was right in between a bunch of barges. There wasn't much ramp there. Most of it was underwater. And I could look out on that river. Looked like it was a mile across and there was great big trees, buoys, debris, float down that river at a very fast rate of speed. Where the water was coming around the sides of those barges was an incredible speed compared to what I was used to. I looked out at that river and I said, man, do I really want to take my little boat out in that? Well, I had enough sense not to go out there at night. Just to the left, there was like a little gazebo with some benches. There was some guy sitting out there just gazing at the river. So I walked over and talked to him. As it turns out, he was somebody that decided to take a float trip on a pontoon boat from the top of America all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. He said the trip was going good and everything was fine until he hit the Mississippi River. He got into the Mississippi just below Cairo, Illinois, made it down to the Wycliffe, Kentucky area, and he had motor troubles. Next thing you know, he was slammed up against some barges, and if he'd had any other kind of boat, he might have died. Either way, he was rescued, and during his time staying in that town, he fell in love with that town and decided to move there. He told me he would never go back out in that river again. He went to that spot in the evenings and looked out on that river, and it made him thankful for life because that was the spot that almost took his life. I had learned just before I got there, some firefighter local to the area was out in a boat and somehow got his boat turned over around them barges and he didn't make it back. The sign at the boat ramp said, enter water at your own risk. So I showed up the next morning. I looked out on the river again. It was now daylight. I knew I had plenty of daylight. And I looked at that river and I said, do I really want to go out there? I said, man, I done drove a long way to get here. I said, I'm going out there. You could not see the actual bank of the Mississippi River because the bank was going up into the woods, up into the fields, 40 foot over flood stage, continuing to rise and was gonna crest several days later. I made an initial run out in the river and realized I had no Navionics on my phone or in my boat. There was no chart reading of the bottom of this river. The only way I knew how deep I was was to look at my down scan or side scan. There was no graph or chart to show me drops, holes, humps, wing dams. I was fishing basically completely blind in a spot I'd never been. We're hooked up!
I had the power of five rivers coming together. The Tennessee River and Cumberland River were dumping into the Ohio River on my right, and then the Mississippi and the Missouri River were coming in on my left, and all that was coming in into that one spot. It was in an outside bend, and once that current had come up in an outside bend, it got real crazy there. Waves, uh, swirling currents. I rode up into that a little bit. I was getting readings of about 90 foot deep. Many places of the main channel were 100 foot deep at this time. I have no idea how fast that current was, but it was too fast for my 16 ounces of weight when I tried to fish the ledge. We're hooked up with the real fish. Mississippi River, baby. Sorry about the sun and the camera. He came off then. I ended up deciding, after several attempts fishing deeper, that I wasn't going to fish this river where I wanted to fish it. I was only going to fish it where it would let me fish it. I ended up right on a current seam, right outside the bank. I was probably fishing outside of the actual Mississippi River channel due to the actual flooding taking place at this time. I said, this is all I can do. I'm just going to drop some baits in the water. Well, I had a shot at a big fish. He come off, man. Got these big barges and stuff coming around here. You can see them out there. Oh, Mississippi River blue catfish. Riled up.
Mr. Blue Kit. Mississippi River. Got the dang sun in the camera. I believe that big fish I lost was a flathead. But either way, first decent fish in the boat for the day out here on the Mississippi River. If he'll open his mouth. Oh, first Mississippi River blue catfish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If this wind would die down where I could keep my boat straight, I'd get a number of rods out. But the wind ain't gonna stop until I pull this boat off the water and go back to the motel. That's just the way it works. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 I learned how to spell it when I was five years old, but this is my first time fishing it. I have no navionics. I have no idea what the bottom of this river looks like. It don't work on my phone here. It don't work on my graph. The only thing I can do is just ride around and downskin the channel ledge is just way too swift and got too many trees coming down it. I might ride around just to watch the Asian carp jump while I'm scanning the bottom. Yeah, this current's too rough. 16 ounces of lead, it won't even hold me down. This river is 40 foot over flood stage. I picked a great time to come.
M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Springtime was not the right time to be fishing that section of the Mississippi River. I didn't conquer the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River conquered me. I'm glad I done it and I'll go back. But this is one time that a river got the best of me.